Throughout his career, Jeremy Allen White has been called a lot of things. Somebody called me a uh, ketamine Gene Wilder. Or Lip Gallagher is still daddy. That's that's simple. Or the thinking woman's Pete Davidson. Okay, full disclosure, we made that one up, but you can see it, right? But lately, people commonly refer to him with a simple Yes. Yes? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes. Okay, chef. Yes, Jeff. Yes, chef. Her yes, yellow. chef. Yes, chef. From putting in the hours at world-renowned restaurants, to adding hidden design elements to his character's very skin, to carrying a prop in his literal back pocket that informed every scene, here's how Jeremy Allen White approached his role in FX's hit show, The Bear. Hands, please! Please! Also, while you're here, hit that subscribe button. It's basically saying yes, chef, to more behind-the-scenes content from Unpeeled. As always... Spoilers ahead. The Bear is a TV show created by Christopher Storer. Storer, a Chicago native, is lifelong friends with the founder of a local institution, Mr. Beef. Storer's sister Courtney is also a professional chef, and by watching both of these important people in his life, Storer became fascinated with the complicated world that exists back of house. On top of that, Storer also has personal experience with dysfunctional Italian families in the Chicago suburbs, addiction, and losing a friend to suicide. All this coalesced in a concept Storer initially intended to be a movie about a chef from the world of fine dining, forced to run a beloved hole in the wall after the death of his brother. Ultimately, this idea was adapted for TV, and the bear was truly born. After giving his sister and chef Maddie Matheson roles as professional kitchen consultants, Fack always fixes it. The kids come in, they break it. What happens? I fix the balls. Fack always fixes the balls. Fix it! Storer set out hiring an ensemble cast that would look perfectly at home on a busy line. Because of his role as a misunderstood Chi Town delinquent in Shameless, Jeremy Allen White was a shoe in for the lead role as Chef Carmi. But White was also suited for this role on a cosmic level. In an interview with GQ, he recalls experiencing an existential crisis as Shameless's final season was wrapping. There was a period where I stopped feeling like an actor, and I started feeling like I was just here to do this show, he says. It was an upsetting headspace to be in. When it was going to end, I was questioning, maybe I do just exist on the show. This uncertainty actually primed him to step into the headspace of Carmi. White goes on to say, We kind of found each other at a similar place. He knew he's really gifted at this thing, but he could be painfully insecure about his abilities as well. I was feeling a little insecure at the end too. And these similarities would continue to grow as the season went on. But more on that later. Most of us don't have the trained eye to recognize professional level knife work or cooking techniques. And frankly, there are so many other things to pay attention to in the bear. But Storer wanted this show to be a love letter to everyone working in restaurant kitchens, so he made sure that the cast could nail every detail. Jeremy Allen White and co-star Ayo Adibri took rigorous classes at the Culinary Institute, where they learned food prep techniques from masters of the craft. How many times you want the answers for the same question? White says there was a quiet competition between he and Adibri to see who can impress their teachers more. This competition in a busy kitchen heavily informed their on-screen dynamic. It's no, gonna no, order no, them stop. Into five, everything, so. fire everything right now. Okay, I'll fire everything now. I just was finishing Step talking out. to Marcus and Step I, out. Okay, I'm gonna talk to Marcus. Step, get order the off my expo chef now! and it probably made them amazing at hosting dinner parties. White also spent a lot of time actually working in the kitchen at Pajoli, a five-star restaurant in Santa Monica. Did the chefs appreciate you were an actor, but also uh, hate you a little bit when you were slow? I walked into every kitchen apologizing, just like, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm here too, um, but like, please. Uh, be patient with me. There, he learned to hone his presentation skills and the physical choreography needed to keep a busy kitchen running smoothly. There's a real dance like to the movement, but handling knives and pans and all that stuff, that kind of helped me as an actor because you kind of get out of your own way a little bit. You, you, you can't you can't be thinking too much about what you're saying or how you're saying it because you have like another Another action, like I think a prop is like a, a really good friend to an actor. <laughs> so every time you're impressed with the cast of the Bears acting, just know they're doing it all while handling extremely real knives. That's one way to stay sharp. Yes, chef. During shooting, White also asked chefs Maddie Matheson and Courtney Storer to watch his cooking skills closely and to yell at him every time he got something wrong. Another way to experience the same stress in the kitchen that Carmi feels. You can barely reach over this fucking table.
table, right? Is this why you have the tattoos and your cool little scars and you go out and you take your smoke breaks? It's fun, isn't it? But here's the thing. You're terrible at this. You're no good at it. Bon Appetit reported that the show's kitchen scenes were so accurate, they were sometimes too triggering for real chefs to watch. To get a feel for Carmi's life before he became a chef, White cooked his way through the Frankie Sputino cookbook and learned how to make the Italian-American red sauce recipes his character would have eaten as a child. My brother and I, we would cook a lot together, especially when we were kids. You know, that's, that's when we were closest. Food was always our common ground. There's a final layer to this regional culinary research that further demonstrates White's diehard commitment to understanding this role from the inside out. And uh, I ate a lot, uh, a lot of hot dogs, <laughs> a lot of Italian beefs, um, dozens. Yeah. A gross amount. Between this and the Christian Bale and the machinist approach, we think we'll take the former. They say to get to know someone, you have to walk a mile in their shoes, but Jeremy Allen White would rather design all of their tattoos. I have a buddy, Benny Shields, who's a really wonderful tattoo artist, and he helped me design all of them. These angels, uh, I thought maybe Carmi would have gotten when his brother was still alive, uh, that maybe he would have gotten for, for his sister and his brother. Uh, they're right here. Carmi's tattoos, extras. That's a Pyrex with the world in it. SOU, sense of urgency, always. I don't know if that's always on time. I don't think I actually use this one. But yeah, it, it was interesting to kind of get to know a character through tattoos. He describes the tattoos as a sort of armor for Carmi, a way to both show the battles he's won and to shield himself from the world. White's attention to detail is a great creative choice to show his portrayal truly goes beyond skin deep elements. White's performance and the preparation behind it is immaculate, but we'd be remiss if we didn't also mention, Don't you, you have fantastic hair. And that detail is not just a little something for the ladies. White actually modeled this look off of British chef Marco Pierre White. Apart from his hair, Chef White is known for his culinary brilliance and a reputation of being so volatile in the kitchen Say, come on, you get out the way. that he once made then apprentice Gordon Ramsay cry. He remains the only human being, as far as I'm aware, who's ever made Gordon Ramsay cry. No, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. He's also credited with writing the first Modern Chef memoir, a book beloved by both Jeremy Allen White and Anthony Bourdain. He may be the father of kitchen memoirs, but these images give a bit of spice as well. And while this do is perfect thematically and aesthetically, it has one major drawback. A lot of people are calling out and they're not wrong that I should have been wearing a cap. I should have been wearing like something because <laughs> like so much of Carmi's hair is probably in all those sandwiches. Yeah. Health code violations aside, White's look in this show was so popular among certain viewers that Bon Appetit claimed, we are in the midst of a line cook summer in an article that also coined the term sexually competent dirtbag to describe the vibe. Even White himself gets the appeal, saying, if you're truly good at something, that's incredibly attractive. I understand people having a crush on Carmi. I think I have a bit of a crush on Carmi. And while White had the tats, he had the hair, he had the hours of hands-on training, he also had something that informed every aspect of his performance. Fans of the show were especially struck by this emotional monologue. Yeah, I, was, I was good at something that was so new and that was so exciting and I just wanted him to know that and f I just wanted him to be like, good job. And the more he wouldn't respond, and the more our relationship kind of strained, the deeper into this I went and the better I got. It doesn't show up until the season finale, but White kept this scene in his back pocket from day one, literally. I just kept those pages, it's about three pages, um, and I ripped them out of the script. I had them in my back pocket the whole shoot. And it was really nice because it feels like a real blueprint to like Carmi's sort of trauma and it felt like a real in. So if I was nervous about another scene one day and I didn't really know where, where Carmi was at or how he'd be feeling, um, I would use that that monologue and those those pages to kind of like find my way in. A lesser actor may have chewed the scenery on this one or made the choice to yell in frustration. The bear yells only in the kitchen and in scenes like this, he's small, but no less intense. White's off-camera repetition of this monologue shines in both his vocal inflection and in the microfacial expressions he's using. And he left me his restaurant. And over the last couple of months, uh, I've been trying to fix it because it was in rough shape. And I think it's very clear that me trying to fix the restaurant was me trying to fix whatever was happening with my brother. And I don't know, maybe fix the whole family because that restaurant it has and it, it does mean a lot to people. It means a lot to me. 
I just don't know if it ever meant anything to him. Episode 7 is another testament to repetition and the technical skill of the entire cast. The episode is just one continuous shot that chronicles the chaos of a kitchen overwhelmed by the landslide of orders. Yes, Thank you! Behind. Corner. Oh. Oh. A stylistic choice that was made with only two weeks notice. We rehearsed for two days um, and then we shot about four takes in the morning. We wrapped at like noon that day because we just did it four times and we're out of there. That's a um, lot. I mean, the, the degree of the energy level, is, yes. That's a I think lot. we didn't do five because everybody was kind of losing their, um, their voices. But like a good chef, White says he used this pressure as the ultimate tool. But it was so exciting. Like for me as an actor, I'm always trying to get a little bit lost in the moment. Like I think that's, that's kind of the goal. And the longer period of time you have between action and cut, the longer the take is, I feel like the better chance you have of kind of losing yourself. So I, I loved it. I wish we could shoot the whole show that way. It definitely makes sense why you'd stress eat a few dozen hoagies after a day like that. The bear is a lot of things. It's a dance. It's a drama. It's an unlikely thirst trap. I didn't have any girlfriends. I don't think I'm funny. My skin was dry and oily at the same time. And at press time, it's a 22-time awards nominee. Jeremy Allen White even took home a Golden Globe for his role. The bear. Um, I love the bear. I love Carmi. The series has been renewed for a second season. White says he hopes season two will explore what happens to Carmi when he finds success and the ways that might make him reconsider how he lives his life. Whatever happens, you can bet it'll be full of the attention to detail, meticulous behind the scenes prep, and passionate work that Jeremy Allen White brings to everything he does. I love acting. Thank you, Chef. So what do you think? Did Jeremy Allen White's turn on the bear make you hungry for another season? Tell us that and any other subjects you'd like to see on our menu for future episodes in the comments below. Does anyone ever order the ice cream? I forgot we had ice cream. <laughs>